Support for this episode of the PowerCast comes from HowMuchYouBench.net, home of Mark Bell's Slingshot. Bench heavy with no pain with Mark Bell's Slingshot. Apparel for strong people at 8manstrong.com and Bodybuilding.com. Bodybuilding.com is the world's largest fitness website and supplement store. Bodybuilding.com has free fitness plans for every level. Visit Bodybuilding.com today to become your best self. Hey, this is Jim McDonald. Welcome to episode 184 of the PowerCast. This episode, for the first time in a long time, is just me and Mark and Mike. We talked about a lot of different things, kind of caught up a little bit. Uh, probably the biggest issue that we discussed, though, was um, about competing against someone in something, against, you know, against somebody in something, and you suspect that they're using some kind of performance-enhancing drug. Um, this specific instance that we were talking about is Mark Hunt in the UFC when he was uh, fighting Brock Lesnar, and he's actually brought suit against the UFC. Uh, saying the UFC knew what was going on or knew that he had tested positive or knew that he was going to test positive or something like that. Anyway, it's a complicated issue. We also talk about um, some of the politics of the uh, USAPL IPF that uh, Chad Wesley Smith recently brought up. And we talked about how big Ed Hone's hands are, uh, amongst other things. Anyway, though, hopefully you will enjoy this episode. Please like and share. Before we get too far along, I want to say bodybuilding.com wants to give you loyal PowerCast listeners some more free supplements and gear simply go to at mark bell's PowerCast on instagram tag two friends two friends in the comments of today's PowerCast. with so this episode when it goes up on instagram tag two friends bodybuilding.com will send you out a gear bag protein aminos pre-workout and more just tag two friends on instagram at mark bell's PowerCast to enter and we will select the winner from those who enter Enjoy this episode. I can hear the fat man about to sing. <laughs> Did you notice mm-hmm. that at the end of the day at the Fit Expo, they, they play opera music? Oh, the right. fat lady sings. I didn't. That's great. Recorded live at Super Training Gym in West Sacramento, California. Fat Expo. This is Mark Bell's Power Cast. Alongside Silent Mike and Jim McDee, here's your host, Mark Bell. That's your cue. Oh, who am I supposed to say? I don't know. I'm finishing emails. <coughs> you're emailing are, people? Was, you're, unpre- you're, 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 uh, unprepared. You're not sleeping on the job. You're actually working on the job. Uh, yeah. Double what time. What does that he, mean? He's, yeah, he's, du- he's multitasking. Double timing. I've never had to deal with that before. Yeah. Most Somebody people. throwing in extra work, bonus work. Yeah, most people are bums around here. Working on top of working, you're podcasting and emailing simultaneously. Can't be stopped. I'm going to Instagram next. Multi multitasking. Working, uh, working Work. shitty on a bunch of different things at the same time. <laughs> working, you can't concentrate on anything, right? Working the corner. That's just the way it goes. Hot corner. Yeah. Well, Jim, I don't know if you heard much about. We got a bunch of drama in this world. Uh, Mark Hunt. Have you heard about him? The UFC fighter who. Is suing Dana White and suing the UFC because Brock Lesnar whooped his ass. Because <laughs> Brock Lesnar beat him up. No, because he thinks that the UFC and Dana White knowingly allowed Brock to fight uh, when he's on when he shit. Performance enhanced. Yeah. 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 And I don't even know what Brock tested positive for either. It's a colon pin or something like weird like that. For, what's the name of that shit? I don't think it was just like a flat out like uh, steroid. Doesn't everybody? They never get popped with tests. They always get popped with. Uh, uh, like a post cycle something. Yeah, like an estrogen right. blocker yeah. or something like yeah. that. Maybe that's what it was. Um, <clears throat> but you know, there's there's some issues with it. First of all, you know, I love the UFC. Huge fan. Always have been. Probably always will be. Um, <clears throat> one of the issues here with Mark Hunt is the fact that uh, going into the fight, he was like. Mark Hunt is is the opposite of Brock Lesnar when it comes to appearance. They're all fat and pudgy. <laughs> he's a, yeah, he's a, a heavy guy, and he's he's kind of a, almost like a George Foreman character. Yeah, as opposed to an Evander Holyfield character, right? He's he's not lean. He's not defined. He doesn't look strong, but he's incredibly strong, and he knocks people out for a living. Um, he said before the fight that uh, he would fight Brock. Even though he was all juiced up, he's, like that was a quote from him. Yeah, in an interview, oh. he was like kind of antagonizing the yeah. uh, the whole thing. Being a smartass, but that's going to come bite you in the butt in oh, the yeah. court when you're fucking trying to sue yeah, somebody for over sure. it. 
Because he yeah. basically is just giving consent. Uh, yeah. Yeah, and if you're so tough, yeah, why complain after? Like informed consent. Yeah. yeah, well, that's that powerlifting shit. Like you miss a lift. Oh, the sun was in my eye. Shoes tied too tight. <laughs> yeah. I deadlifted yesterday. Yeah. And like, yeah. Come on, man. It after does, the fact. It does bring up a good point, though, and we've seen this happen before. Uh, you had, um, oh, my God, both names just disappeared from my head, but there was a, the biggest girl fight of all time. That happened years ago. Cyborg between uh, Cyborg and and the girl who's in movies. Uh, Karina or uh, uh, Carano. Gina, Gina Carano. Carano yeah. yeah, yeah. Afterwards, you know, they 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 said that uh, Cyborg it's, tested positive. I mean, Brock. I mean, I know he looks insane at <laughs> UFC <laughs> weigh-ins. Just <laughs> stupid. He looks gigantic. First of all, I mean, let's just point out a few obvious things. I mean clear that Brock Lesnar's probably used stuff on and off for years. Who's another heavyweight also, that also, look like that? Yeah, also very clear that Brock Lesnar's genetics are just on a different level. Yeah. So, oh, yeah. I mean, and they have been since he's been a kid. I mean, he's been just an absolute mutant freak. Yeah. Just forever. And, uh, you know, he's a guy who has tested clean many times in the UFC. So, I mean, I, I don't. I don't know all the nuances of, of how they get tested and what happens. And, uh, you know, I do know he's a big name. And some people will say, oh, the conspiracy, maybe he's protected. Jeff, who we had, Jeff Nowitzki, who we had on here, said otherwise. But he didn't make it sound very possible. Yeah. Well, no, he, he, but, but he did, he, when Mike kind of pushed the issue a little bit, he, you know, he did say it's a, it's a business agreement. You know, well, they like said it's they, true. There's an exchange of dollars, right? Yeah, they like, said they lost money because of the Bones Jones getting popped. Right. Uh, uh, but then who knows? They might they might gain money on the back end, you know? Like maybe, look, I'm not much of a conspiracy guy, mm-hmm. but you think five-year business plan of UFC, well, the next Bones Jones might make triple that money, right? Right. Like they, yeah. it could be marketing, like demand well, and, and fuck uh, or whatever. So now the demand's even higher because he's been gone a year. And he's going to fight DC out of nowhere. And they could just pray to make 1.2 what they were going to make, and then they make profit. And also, maybe Gatorade comes in. Yeah. And yeah. maybe so and so comes in yeah, because they know. like the mystique. They like that uh, they're trying to be clean or right. whatever. They're trying to actually test. But yeah, whatever truths or not, I would just be confused why the UFC would hide Brock Lesnar's test and not hide Bones Jones. Yeah, that would be yeah, my yeah. that would yeah. be my argument for yeah, right. the UFC. Right. I, if you're gonna hide one of those, you choose Bones. Even though Brock may, shit, I don't know. I guess they're pretty hard to say who has more clout and star power. But during that that time, Bones Jones was on top of the world. Yeah, both yeah, Instagram absolutely. and and pound for pound, yeah. b- most baddest dude on the planet. He had all the sponsorships. He was everywhere. Mm-hmm. A lot of stuff becomes interesting. There's so many different levels of fighting, or so many different levels of cheating. And you know, if you had if you had Brock Lesnar. Uh, let's say have something in his glove that makes him hit harder. Yeah. Then everybody would f- really freak out, yeah, right? I right. mean, now you're now we're talking about something very dangerous. But I think that Mark Hunt is suing for basically the same reason, saying yeah. like, "Hey, he does all this stuff that makes him hit harder. Uh, my life's in jeopardy," you know. And yeah. I think that's the message he's trying to send. And uh. <laughs> It it sound it sounds a little crybaby ish to me uh, when it's after the fact and and yeah. when and when you like if you thought something was weird beforehand uh, why co- why collect that check you know the paycheck against Brock Lesnar is probably the biggest paycheck he's ever received yes, you can't and, really uh, blame him for so fighting his, and losing either so his 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 values uh, as a person should have been like you know what. I don't give a fuck about that money. Let's make this fair. Let's make this right. I know he's on shit. I don't mind fighting him if he's because I think I because I'm confident in myself. I think he'd kick his ass either way. But you guys are covering shit up. I'm not doing the fight. And I'm not accepting. I'm not accepting the fight. I'm not taking the money. Mm-hmm. The test. But he did the fight and probably made a fuckload of money. Yeah. The test came out afterwards. The test came out afterwards. Yeah. But that's, so, that's so the UFC is supposed to just know that maybe, but it is weird that Bones up. Jones uh, they found out about the test like the day before the fight or two days, like the fight was Saturday. They found out about it Thursday, Friday. Yeah. Why didn't they find out about well, Brock's so, yeah. the same, the same? Because yeah. they probably collect the yeah. specimens uh, randomly. Right. I believe Jeff said year round, mm-hmm. but then also like a week of or a month yeah. out, right? They also like determine those for sure. That seems a little yeah. sketch. Bo- Bones Jones's uh, test. 
Now, Bones Jones has tested positive a couple of times, I believe. I think uh, um, cocaine was the other one. Yeah, and that yeah, and that right. was and yeah. like yeah, that was a little bit different. Cocaine of a thing. and dick pills. Right, Supposedly. and I think the testing that happened that got him a day before or something, uh, just so happened to be that they that was one of those examples of random randomized testing, I believe. But I this think the information here kind of says that uh, from Jeff. I kind of asked him a quick question about it, and he basically said that um, uh, Brock uh, has tested, has been tested a bunch of times, multiple clean tests. Uh, before this one dirty test came up, uh, and it's for Clomid, which is uh, basically SARM? basically a blocker, right? Like an estrogen blocker. It's kind of a yeah. It's uh, p- used for PCT, post psychotherapy, yeah. a That's lot. And the other thing that that Clomid is used for is big loads, right? Uh, like a porn deal, like porn loads. Yeah, they use it in porn. Um, I don't know. Supposedly, supposedly, that's one of those word on the street things. I don't know for sure that this is true. I say we test someone this theory. Will, someone will respond, and yeah, somebody and uh, test this theory and tweet somebody, us. Somebody has done it, I'm sure. What's uh, Clomid actually made for? Uh, female reproductive stuff. Uh, yeah, to help chicks. Yeah. yeah, to help yes. them give birth. Yes, and I guys so. take it for bigger loads. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and Brock exactly. took it for we don't know. Uh, you can, so it's it's an estrogen re estrogen receptor modulator, so what it it fuck? keeps yeah drug for it, ovulation introduction. It says basically or in, induction. Sorry. Yeah. What the hell? So if you're not ovulating, or they use it also for uh, in vitro fertilization for the collection part. They're trying to get a bunch of eggs at once. Seems weird. Yeah. Some weird drugs out there. So either he was coming off something or he was... Uh, Trying to bust nuts. Yeah. I used to can't blame the guy for wanting to bust nuts. <laughs> yeah. Who do- who doesn't? Who only wants to hit the back of their knuckles? You want to reach across the whole goddamn bedroom, yeah, right? Yeah. yeah. Spray it. <laughs> Put something on the ceiling. Spread your seed, so to speak, right? You do that's a rock. That's what <laughs> Is he back in the WWE? That's what we're talking about. Uh... I don't know. Some of that's kind of weird, too. I know he goes back and forth. Because some of those guys are so sloppy now, you know, that the WWE tests. Yeah. But so, uh, there's like one or two that are fucking yoked. Like if they're supposedly drug testing. I mean, I guess that's every sport. You can blame genetics or whatever. But mm-hmm. right. there's very few big guys in the UFC that are jacked. Was uh, Alistair a heavyweight when he was jacked? Mm, uh, for a short period. But then, might, he, but then he tested positive. Right, that's what I mean. He's losing. the only other one. Yeah. Right? Like DC looks like he DC's jacked actually people call him fat but he's got big old traps big old shoulders but he's pudgy. I also don't know how long like Je- like Jeff from when he was here he was he's only been with the UFC for like a year yeah, and a yeah, half yeah. two years. He right? probably, yeah. no I think a year and a half he didn't deal Alistair and stuff. Yeah. But I'm just saying like the super heavies in that sport aren't jacked. Yeah right no they're not 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 normally. Uh, who's the other one? Cain Velasquez there's not couple, jacked. There's a couple guys who are in shape but but you're not right. like that. You're right. No not like Brock Lesnar and not like Alistair. No. And who was the other one? Vitor Belfort? Was he a super heavy or just a heavy at uh, some point? He's done some heavyweight. But yeah, he was fucking first. jacked and then got yeah. popped. Yeah. Like if, I think Mark, that's Mark's old like adage. Like If you're fucking over 220, 230, 240 and you're pretty damn lean, something yeah. weird's going on. Yeah, yeah It just makes it so hard to judge at that point. Yeah, that's kind of like, like the O'Hearns and some of these other guys that They're you huge. see. You're just like, man, Like I, I would love to believe you, man, but I I don't know. Yeah, what the one sound, benefit uh, uh, sound correct. Brock might be what, 6'3"? Yeah, six. Three, that would six, be the four. one thing huge. I would. That would be the one thing I would give him. You know, because obviously the weights too, disperse different. He's difference. huge. Yeah. He's always been huge, and like I mentioned earlier, let's just face the facts that his genetics yeah. are on another level. Yeah, he had a big well. ass, big ass neck in high school and shit. <laughs> yeah, too. he's always been you know bailing hay and shit like that or whatever he's been doing. So, but so did Larry Bird. <laughs> yeah. He didn't. He didn't look that way. Yeah. This is true. I've also always thought, or at least in the last few years, thought that um, taking stuff can make a permanent change, whether or not you continue to, to take stuff. I think uh, uh, per looks, um, aesthetics, I think it's been proven that way. Yeah, studies. Es- especially if you're um, you're good about diet yeah. when you're off. That's you why know? like natural bodybuilding federations have like you know five years mm-hmm. since you took something right. to we've, come We've compare. talked a bunch on the podcast about steroids. I mean, it seems like they come up all the time. Um, and this is, you know, be somewhat controversial to say, but like I, I honestly, in certain sports, I just don't know how much it really helps. It can be a it can be a big advantage because you're going to be stronger uh, in some sense. But if the other guy, there, there's so many factors that go into a UFC fight. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, that like, 
I mean, Jim, you you know this too, and some of the other guys have been around the sport for a long time. You can't just take something and have it like solve all your problems. Yeah. No, it actually causes a lot of problems. It causes a lot of problems right away. Like, Mike, if you were to take something now and go blow up your arms the way you normally do, you would do two sets and you'd go, holy yeah. fuck, I can't even do another set because now there's so much goddamn blood in my arms. Now, that sensation kind of goes away after you do it for a while, but... Um, now, how does that play out in a UFC fight? Yeah. Well, I think you know? it all goes back to what they're taking, right? I mean, yeah. I'm no master, but you take, no, there's some, different you take some fucking clumbuterol, a little bit of EPO, and a little bit of test, and you now, probably, you're probably crushing yeah. shit. Uh, EPO you know, is going to put you on another level because that's uh, going to enhance your condition. Yeah. And clean, right. too, a little bit, yeah? Stimulant in some lungs and shit. Uh, yeah. yeah. Theoretically, you know? yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, like I said, I don't know what I'm talking about, but... I'm sure there's a Mike substance. Doesn't know what he's talking yeah. about. Wink, wink. There's a it substance. Can also make your heart race. Yeah, which maybe can make you di- make it difficult to perform. I was gonna yeah. say good or bad. Like maybe yeah. it helps adrenal and your fucking pain tolerance goes up. Like right. there's right. so many uh, drugs out there, and then there's so many different sports. I, I think it's, it would be hard to find a drug that didn't help you. Agree or disagree? Mm-hmm. You can be an Olympian without steroids. Yeah, I think anything's possible. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. I think you have yeah. to be pretty gifted, yeah. though. You think you can beat <laughs> some? You think somebody out there could beat Phil Heath or Ronnie Coleman or? Yeah, yeah. I think drugs without. are number. I think uh, Charles Poliquin kind of mentioned that too, uh, where drugs are number one for looks. Yeah, uh, and then performance is kind of right. after that. Like, like and e- then, uh, even in powerlifting, the guys on on shit will always like look more jacked than a natural guy, but not always be stronger. Right. That's yeah. why I, I do believe that it's possible many of the IPF well, guys are. So if you, if you kind of break things down a little bit, I mean, you look at like World's Strongest Man and you look at um, World's Strongest Man, the overall size of the athlete is so crazy. Do you watch that Eddie Hall movie? Yeah. yeah uh, pretty well. Is it Travis Best? No, Travis Best was at the Fit Expo. Nick, Nick Best? Nick Best. Yeah. Uh, I think mentioned, he's like, I think it's possible to win World's Strongest Man clean. Yeah. I mean, I, I've heard some crazy. I don't know if I believe that. Well, so anyway, back to my point. My, <laughs> my point bad. my point is this is like is it possible to win a UFC championship clean? Yeah. I would say yes. Is, I it, would is say it possible yeah. to be the quarterback yeah. uh of a winning team of a winning Super Bowl team, yeah. be the MVP of the Super Bowl like a Tom Brady or or some of his other guys? Yeah. I think we could all sit here and and agree that that sounds logical. Um can you bench press 600 pounds without being on stuff? Yeah, much more rare. Uh, I would like start to raise an eyebrow on that one, and but I would say the only thing that would make me think differently is if you're just really, really fucking big, yeah, I or think, uh, really uh, super uh, heavy. You know, if you're a big, <clears throat> heavy guy, then you know. But there's outrageous shit out there. I talked today with uh, Jennifer Thompson, 314 pound bench at 100, and we've said her weight wrong before. 35 or 38. <laughs> 30, 32 pounds or we, something Yeah, like we get confused because our weight classes are They're different than thing. IPF. So yeah. it's 132 or 138. She's somewhere in there. But, like, you would automatically, if somebody said yes or no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and a they, normal human, especially outside of said, fitness. True or false, yeah. on shit or not on shit, you would say, in, indeed, yeah. there's no question she's on shit. Yeah. Right. And she's a drug-tested athlete, gets drug-tested frequently, I think over 25, 30 times. Over right. the last several years, and never had, never tested positive in her life. So. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely true that the more specific and specialized a sport gets, the less <laughs> uh, drugs are necessary yeah. to be at the top, right? Golf, mm-hmm. steroids. I don't think uh, would hurt, but they're mm-hmm. not gu- not guaranteed, right? I mean, I think that s- the steroids might cause more problems. In you golf. know what I mean? Yeah, um, yeah. Depending on the one, and I'm thinking about back. the lower back and all the standing and the yeah, swinging. Yeah. <laughs> I would yeah. think that that could be a real handicap. Depending I mean, on all of it, right? Depending yeah. on the drugs you take. But, right. but s- my point is same thing with a quarterback. I say it's less likely for a quarterback to take it than maybe a D lineman. Right. Yeah. Right. Just because the amount that the D lineman is hitting, running, jumping is less than the accuracy, the game right. planning, the the vision mm-hmm. that uh, Tom Brady will go through. And similar uh, down the road, right? Something like soccer, way more finesse, way more skill. Um, just the higher the skill level, the less steroids affects your actual skill unless we find a drug that's like the fucking movie Limitless or something. However, they said the same thing about baseball and pitchers. And it turned out there was a shit ton of pitchers taking steroids. I'm sure. Well, and steroids is a category. And I yeah. think that's another yeah. thing that people think about when they're like, you know, steroids is whatever, synthesized hormone. Yeah. Rather than you think steroids, you think big old R- Ronnie Coleman people. But And sometimes people are categorizing growth hormone and just kind yeah, of piling yeah, a lot, on a lot, again yeah, all that performance-enhancing yeah. drug. Yeah. Or even something that's outlawed, like Adderall. Uh, section. Right. Like it. 
I think a, a thing about that is that the lower body is so important in in pitching. Yeah, yeah. And it's a you can certainly put a whole lot of strength and and yeah. size on your yeah. lower body yeah. on steroids. It's it probably more. Who's that the, maniac from the Braves that used to run out? Uh, Rocker is that? Was he from the Braves or was it? What team was he on? John Rocker. Remember he used oh, to yeah, sprint Rocker, out. Yeah. And he was fucking huge. And so in the last few years, I've been in the same place as that guy. I don't remember where we were. Yeah, yeah. I think I think we did run into yeah, him somewhere, yeah. but the guy was fucking enormous. Like He's a baseball guy. Yeah, he was a, he was a pitcher, but uh, some of the pitchers are huge. I mean, even yeah. CC Sabathia, like not Jack, but he's a big dude. Yeah, he's a big boy. Yeah, he's he's got some body weight on him for sure. So it's just a, the whole topic is uh, is really interesting to me because it's it's so hard to decipher what the hell's going on, especially. In today's day and age of all these uh, big lifts that we're seeing in powerlifting yeah. um, and all these miraculous uh, sports performances, um, it's just it's so hard to tell who's doing what. Uh, and I know some people that have never taken anything are probably listening right now going, what the fuck is he talking about? It, he doesn't think it helps that much. I'm not really saying I don't think it helps that much. I just think that uh, a ster- like one guy taking a steroid – Versus another guy who's already very talented. Yeah, uh, you know, I think, I think it's like you can pick whatever weapon you want, and good luck against some of these guys that are savages yeah, in the UFC. Same thing as I tweeted that uh, genetics outrule or, or beat overworking, and everyone yeah. got pissed at that because everyone wants to believe they have a shot. Uh, but genetics ultimately overrules steroids too, because Gary they, V, who we're going to visit yeah. uh, in uh, in New York in in a, in a month or so. Uh, has said the same thing. He he was kind of asked the question like of, you know, hey, does hard work beat uh, genetics? And uh, he said, I'm forced to say that hard work does beat genetics so that I can reach somebody. <laughs> right. You know, and he said, right. I don't want you to give up. Right. Like, because his point was you can improve your life. You know, oh, yeah. you can't catch up to that guy over there. But you can improve your life, and you can't catch up to that girl over there. But you can improve your life. It's a thing, not the thing. <laughs> exactly. Um, something. Okay. T- two things. One of them. If you were talking about just in terms of pure performance enhancement, uh, would you say that someone would get more for, on a max lift for using max lift one rep using a slingshot <laughs> or using steroids? That's a great question. Uh, I would say, you know, immediate return would be the slingshot yeah. because that's going to right there on the spot is going to help you to probably lift 40 or 50 more pounds. Um, increases in increases in strength that I've seen from from long term steroid use are sometimes uh, much more than that, mm-hmm. Fit much more than just 50 pounds. A lot of times we're talking a hundred pounds or in some cases even hundreds of pounds because as we laid out here before on the podcast uh steroids helping you to gain mass and gain body weight and have more overall like just again take mike as an example he's our guinea pig if mike if mike weighed 280 Mm -hmm. i mean look at the weights he's crushing now right let's just say that he weighed 280 even with or without steroids but if he weighed 280 is he going to squat 600 He's going to squat probably closer to 700. Um, who knows what happens to his deadlift. He might be too fat to get to the bar. Or jacked. But, but is he going to bench 500? Sure. Yeah. Like, all those things will happen very easily. So I'd say steroids would, would win the long-term battle over a slingshot. This is another thing that came to mind, um, that the steroid-era baseball players mm. – are starting to look like they're going to get a shot at the Hall of Fame. Mm. What is that? Barry Bonds, Sammy Sosa, Mark uh, McGuire? It, yeah. Uh, Roger Clemens. Yeah. Uh, because the commissioner, who knew what was going on, probably, has been inducted into the Hall of Fame already. That's awesome. Uh, and a lot of yeah. the writers Makes say sense. it's not fair to keep the, the athletes out if yeah. the management knew. Yeah, that's true. Mm. So, I don't, I but Sea League. Yeah. It's all just so complicated because same thing with Brock Lesnar like there's college pictures of him in Iowa or mm-hmm. Wisconsin or wherever yeah. he was wrestling but who's to say he wasn't on shit then yeah it's you know it's possible yeah and same with Barry Bonds yeah he got way more jacked and, and bigger head and yeah. all this during his career in the uh, MLB but who's to say he didn't do it in college yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm sure Brock Lesnar has probably been accused of steroids since he was like 14 yeah well, and He's probably always there's many big. people that we know who's to say he didn't take him at 14 you know yeah. obviously rare case yeah. but the point is that you can't really find out 
until ever. <laughs> you <laughs> yeah, just can't. You know. just can't find out. It's a personal business if, item. If unless, it, unless if, they get caught, you don't it, know. Yeah, if that person wants you, to keep a fucking secret. He's going to keep a fucking secret. Yeah, if you choose to believe somebody, that's just that's just up to you. Yeah, it's yeah, it's, you. and it's still whatever, right? Because how many people lie about everything? But you know, on on the other hand, I would say you know <laughs> that it could be a positive thing to just you know not be so naive, but also. Just fucking take what people say at face value. Just, you know, why Why are they delivering this message where they're lying to me? Let me just believe it so that I can fucking go after my goals. Right. And my dreams have 20-inch yeah. arms or whatever it is. Like, it's okay to, like, as a kid, you know, I looked through all the magazines. I never thought about steroids. Right. Yeah. I do think that was one of Jeff's best points that UFC, a guy gets on shit and can hit a lot harder. Now we got literally endangering somewhere else, right? We always talk about, like, look, if, if Jim's taking a bunch of shit, doesn't affect me. Right, right, live my life. Mm -hmm. uh, but when I'm fighting Jim and he's taking a bunch of shit, it may end up affecting my yeah. face. Uh, where baseball, yeah, it's lame if the whole fucking Cardinals or whoever's on shit and my team isn't. Right. Uh, but they're not going to end up killing me. Literally, yeah. uh, it maybe you know take money from my pocket as you know they'll get mm, a bigger contract and they'll win more championships and more endorsements and this and that. It fucking sucks. But at the end of the day, about just human nature and living and being a good person. Maybe it's not as bad when you're punching someone's face in. Right, and you would you would choose, in terms of competition, you would choose a tested federation because right. you want to reduce the possibility yeah. that the person who's lifting against you is going to beat you if you're trying to win. I wonder why that's not a thing in other sports. I mean, it, powerlifting seems to be the only one. Uh, yeah. Maybe yeah. weightlifting now. Uh, there may be a federation that doesn't test. but I don't know. Uh, it's been kicked around for a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, but like, yeah, baseball league where they fucking test, baseball league where they don't fucking test. Uh, IFBB supposedly tests. Yeah, we supposedly. Look, we look that up. Yeah. yeah. Well, there's there's a choice to do a non-tested bodybuilding, and there's a choice yeah. choice to get tested, right? You don't right. really have that test in football, or that choice. <laughs> yeah. But isn't yeah, a lot of... there's not non-tested football. Isn't a lot of it um, uh, lie detector? Uh, I think a lot of natural bodybuilding is. Uh, oh, yeah, Because yeah, yeah. they don't have the funds to do um, piss and blood. Mm -hmm. And then I, I even think weightlifting and, and CrossFit and whatever is... A lot, even UFC, I believe, is a lot of pee. Uh and I think they take blood too. I think on the uh, rarer occasion, not every visit. Yeah, and that's the same, you know, everywhere where you'd imagine hair follicle or blood or whatever. I don't. I'm no expert again, but mm. those have to be more accurate, right? Yeah, you would think. But it all comes down to money in their case too. Yeah, absolutely. Although they have a shit ton of money. Yeah. Everywhere. Speaking of a shit ton of money, are you guys familiar with the? Uh, uh, Salvo that our friend uh, Fat Wesley Smith launched against the, against the USAPL. Uh, so we heard about it, but we didn't hear it. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I, I heard that there was uh, some bombs dropped back and forth. Some of it's uh, we listened to some of it, and um, you know, some of it's like just so heavy and detailed in powerlifting. Even I. Don't yeah. have the stamina to listen to it or care that much. Well, <laughs> he he boiled it down. I probably could find it if I really want to, but there are cu just a couple of yeah, things. Give us I highlights. Th throw out one of them is that um, they want the coaches that are selected for these interna international teams to be selecting attempts, whereas uh, the athletes don't work with them year round. That's correct, and they have their own coaches or coach themselves. This is correct. Uh, yeah, and that makes one hundred percent. Uh, to me, right? Yeah. Uh, in it, any sport, if Michael Jordan just appeared um, under uh, Tom Thibodeau, who's a really good Bulls coach now, he's not going to have the same connection and yeah. follow the same rules as he did with six or seven, eight years with Phil uh, Phil Jackson. Just makes sense. The USAPL, uh, you know, again, going out of their way, IPF, going out of their way to make things more difficult than is necessary. Right. What is the problem? Mm -hmm. You know, like what's what's the issue? Um, how about just allow each person to have themselves or a coach? Yeah, handler. Each each person is allowed two people themselves or their coach uh -huh. to call an attempt. What's the problem? Yeah, I, I don't know. You know. Yeah, I don't either. So his point was they shouldn't really have a say if they're not paying for it. Yeah. The athletes actually are paying three hundred and seventy five dollar mm -hmm. entry fee to be in these meets. Mostly American, right? Because and, other other yeah. countries may be different. And the their own travel. Yeah. 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 So in, the, in his exact case, you know, I don't know if Chad mentioned this or not, but we could bring it up. I mean, I think he's dating, or if not, he coaches Marissa Inda. Yeah. Uh, world fucking record holder, yeah. fucking stud. She goes IPF all his time. Yeah. He, he's coached her for two or three years now. He probably wants to choose her attempts where uh, the USAPL, uh, I believe, has the Geary 
uh, Matt Geary and his wife, who are the national coaches, and right. they probably want to choose the attempts because they're coaching the whole team. Right. Uh, but it's just not the same, and it doesn't work that way in team sports, and it doesn't work that way in individual sports. Yeah, and you he, need you need someone that knows you, knows your training, knows what you may or may not be capable of. Also, too, it's your contest. Yeah, right. it's and, true. And I've dealt, I've been on the kind of raw side of that mm-hmm. myself, picking attempts for people where they've been pissed at me, even though they made the lift. Like, it's my fucking meat. Why yeah. didn't she pick? I'm like, okay, I'm out. I'm not doing it anymore. Yeah. Uh, but um, it, it, that it, it brought up a very good point to me. You're, no, you're 100% correct. It is your competition to do whatever you want to do. Right. And like, you're the one who prepared for it. You're the one risking your health. Right. You go ahead and pick whatever you want. You Absolutely. Know what I mean? The other point that he made was, then why aren't they paying for it? Like, if they yeah. want that kind of control, why aren't they paying for it? And he said, like, simple math, in terms of, of the number of lifters they have and the, and the amount that it costs to be a member, yeah. they're, I think he said 650 or $665,000, yeah. and they're a tax-exempt organization. And it'll so take under ten grand to bring everybody to Germany to compete. Yeah. And their books are supposed to be open, yeah. and they're not. Yeah. yeah. I do think it's, uh, even if they were paid for, if they paid for the USAPL guys, even a stipend, yeah. uh, or for them to go overseas and compete in IPF or nationals or whatever, I still think that they should be able to choose their attempts or have their coach choose really attempts. Be- because the whole point is for these athletes to show up and do their best. And their chance to do their best is to have their opinion or their coach do it, not an outside eye. I mean, the only issue might be if they're trying to make a, a PR that they're going to miss, it's going to affect the team score but perhaps but most hopefully people don't do that the people at that, that are, level the people that are going to win nationals hopefully are above that yeah and then the only other way that i would see it work is if these national teammates are uh national for year round yeah multiple years and then they have to work under so-and-so coach that kind of makes sense because i think that's a little bit more like weightlifting where yeah. i believe in the usaw if you have a certain total or uh, land a certain spot at certain meets because they have more big meets than the USAPL. Yeah, the USAPL has nationals and USAW has nationals mm. and the Arnold and right. a- American Open yeah. and blah, blah, blah. If you have a certain total or a certain um, finish in a certain podium spot, I believe you get a stipend. Yeah. I think you just start getting paid out. Yeah. Uh, so if the USAP- USAPL want to go that way where, hey, you, you compete at a state uh, regional or national meet, and you come in top three, you're about to get 500 to a grand a month. Yeah, maybe you have more say in what the fuck I wear or what I do. Regardless of w- what the meat promoter is providing, uh, and probably not much. Uh, yeah, 100%, yeah. which is probably nothing besides yeah. Arnold. Just a quick word from a couple of our sponsors. Bodybuilding.com is the number one fitness website and supplement store. Lowest prices, great customer service, and the largest selection of all fitness supplies and supplements makes bodybuilding.com a must for your fitness needs. They're Easy to use top five supplement guide provides easy access and, and information on all pre, intra, post, and nutritional supplements. Not only does bodybuilding.com have the best prices and deals for your fitness supplements, they have free training and nutritional guides by top level athletes and trainers. Training programs that include picture demonstrations of lifts for novice lifters, which is a big deal if you think about it, as well as training programs for more advanced lifters looking to take their training to the next level. Go follow bodybuilding.com, just all bodybuilding.com as one word, on Instagram for specials and website information as well as giveaways. And don't forget to head over to bodybuilding.com for all your supplement and fitness needs. And now a word from our sponsor, Ape Man Strong. My brother and I began Ape Man Strong with a simple idea to encourage strength in this world, to bring back to life the grit found only in generations of the past. And while our brand has evolved since its founding, its core values have remained unchanged. We are here to promote strength will, determination, and fight in people, to celebrate the strong, and to inspire those that need it. This is what it means to put on the 8-Man brand. So wherever you find yourself today on your personal journey towards strength, we encourage you to always move forward despite any obstacles you may face, and we hope you will do it wearing 8-Man. 8manstrong.com, apparel for people who lift heavy weights. Chad Wesley Smith, by the way, if you're listening, buddy, <laughs> uh, just you know what what can be done about your hair. Uh, you got some things going on. We're friends. I wanted to say something at the Fit Expo, but I didn't want to say something. There's a lot of people around. There was a lot of people. Uh, you're losing your hair. 
it's not a it's not a great uh, battle. Uh, you are handsome. Don't don't think that I'm just jelly and that I'm hating on you because that's what you always say. Um, I am a little bit jelly, but at the same time, that that hairstyle, that Krusty the Clown <laughs> thing that you have going on, the bozo big top look you got going on there is just not. It's not working. I understand you can't wear a hat. You're a big guy. You have a big head. A lot of big guys can't really rock hats. It Brian just, Shaw, yeah. I think, wears one. <clears throat> Um, yeah, it doesn't look quite right though. Yeah. It depends on how he has it on. Because he's just so tall and huge. It yeah. Just, yeah. Often, even small guys, uh, it's about your head matching your shoulders. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And a lot of people can't do that. It just looks like you uh, put a tiny little helmet on top of your head or something, yeah. like that you got out of a. Uh, yeah, like a top hat. Yeah, you got you got like twenty five cent thing or whatever. And if you don't have much difference between your head and your neck in terms of size, yeah. it's hard to wear a hat. The Ed Cone look. Yeah. <laughs> Big ass neck. Yeah, Chad, you're a smart guy. <laughs> we got to rethink this style. What else did he say? You got anything else over there? Uh, those were the big things yeah. that struck me. Uh, uh, they did a whole podcast on it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, some of it was about athlete selection. Yeah, I didn't listen to the whole thing. I just read. Yeah, a bunch some of, of it was about selection. I know, too. Where <clears> like <throat> nationals, uh, it's supposed to be by the numbers, mm -hmm. and I think Chad maybe stated or f facts. I don't know. Mm -hmm. I don't, uh, once again, I'm not that. Didn't research it that much. Talked about. Um, how, yeah, I think the winner of each weight class is on the national team, and then it's supposed to be like top three by Wilkes. I'm mm -hmm. going to make this and it wasn't really, always. I'm going to make this really fucking simple for everybody listening. Just compete somewhere else. Yeah, that's true. Compete where you feel yeah. good about what's happening and where you feel good about what's going on. The uh, USAPL uh, has 15,000 members. Uh, <laughs> yeah. They're cruising right along, and... Um, I understand that a lot of people want to try to compete there because they want to do nationals and then they want to try to figure out a way to get to worlds. Uh, but the 1% of the 1% that go to worlds is few and far between. And uh, just I just don't worry about it. Don't be so yeah. caught up uh, in all the uh, politics of everything. Just compete where you want. I, I think, I'll say this too, the USAPL and IPF, they do way more positive than they do negative. And I know that they, uh, people are pissed at them for many different things, but it's the only organization that is organized. Yeah. <laughs> that's an actual organization. It's the only organization that has a Super Bowl. I think uh, that's everywhere, though. Like uh, CrossFit definitely does more good than bad. Yeah. But we hear inner yeah, workings of, of, of different athletes that aren't so happy right. with how things are I just want to point it out so that people don't think we're just sitting here bitching. But yeah. I, I like a lot of the stuff the USAPL yeah. does. I that's like everywhere. I'm sure a lot of what the UFC, IPF does. Right. Everything has, has inner workings right. that nothing can be perfect, sadly. Uh, yeah. And, and the flaws aren't really crushing anybody. It's not like literally best pound for pound lifter at nationals isn't ending up at worlds. You're right. Yeah. Right. It's not that extreme. It's a fair point. Because of politics. Yeah. It's, it's not like they're not finding who the strongest person in the world is. Right. Well, if you're the strongest, you'll survive and you'll, you'll figure it out. Right. They did write a response to him. Yeah. <coughs> which makes you think that, uh, that I must have pushed some buttons. Yeah, Cause, cause have, cause people are talking about shit on everybody all the time. <laughs> yeah. And for you to come out with an official response, like for me to come out with an official <laughs> I've response. Got e I've gotten emails from them before <laughs> that are like this. You know what I mean, though? Like yeah. for me to come out with an official response to someone that crushed me on fucking Twitter, Instagram, yeah. or, or YouTube or something, like it's got to be really serious for me to go on a YouTube video and say, hey, I really want to talk about Johnny Smith and what he had to say about me. It had to really probably push some buttons. Right. My nose isn't really that big. Yeah. It's just There's in no proportion drugs to my, in my body fanny pack. Yeah. There's no trend in my fanny pack. Fucking haters. Not everybody can be Mark Lobliner. <laughs> <laughs> USA okay, Powerlifting Mark. has procedures for select teams. Right? Go ahead and read it for us, Jim. Okay, it says, uh, you may have seen a recent podcast that was dis that, that dis was discussed Okay, at great length by many. What you may need to know is that many of the comments made were not based on fact. Further, no officials of the USA powerlifting were interviewed in an attempt to get any additional pertinent information i'm sorry this is podcasting not journalism so we don't do that kind of thing that's true anyway three points uh team coaches do not select the national teams athletes qualify by virtue of their performance at particular meets if they qualify given their performance they must be deemed eligible number two those athletes who qualified and were not selected do not receive an invitation to compete on the national team as they are as they were ineligible. The specific reasons differed depending on the athlete involved. And number three, USA Powerlifting has procedures for selecting teams for international competition and managing them in competition, 
these procedures are followed. So uh, I guess they're saying that we have written rules and we followed them. Yeah, I wonder what uh, deems somebody ineligible uh, besides a failed drug test and obviously not qualifying. Uh, that's a good question. I don't know. They may have, uh, you know, you hear about all these rules, right? Being coached by someone that got popped or being in the same room. You know, I wonder how much of that, all that's true. I, that's a really good question. That's yeah. the point I was going to bring up, too. Yeah. They, do they still test coaches out yeah. of competition? Yeah, I don't know. You know? That seems like a weird invasion of witch. privacy. <laughs> a, witch weird, a weird witch hunt. Uh, yeah. yeah, I think a lot of things have turned into a weird witch hunt. And right? again, I think, you know, uh, in the defense of USAPL and IPF, I again, I think that's more of a, uh, my understanding is the WADA rule, but I could be wrong. It could just be their I've heard own. that as well. It but, could be their own rule. But they did out. choose WADA, you know? So yeah. Same right. thing as the UFC, like, y- you you chose to pay them mm-hmm. and you chose to hire them. <laughs> So then they're just, you know, they're part of your organization, yeah. your plan. You, you, by paying someone and, and hiring them to, to fulfill part of your procedures, then you have to fully believe in the procedures. You right. can't hire WADA and say, like, oh, well, we don't really believe in them. Like, motherfucker, you're paying them. Yeah, it's just like the, the state athletic commissions for, for WWE yeah. or, and boxing. They, don't, yeah. they can't overrule them. They, yeah, right, yeah. they can express what they'd like to have happen, but yeah. it doesn't have to be followed. Yeah, they just by virtue of the fact that they're in that business, they have yeah. to com- have to deal with those people. A lot of it, I think, too, is because powerlifting the pool is growing and the popularity is growing, <laughs> and it's clearly growing from you know the because s- of super training. Well, from the sixteen to thirty year old demographic, yeah. which happens to be the same demographic that's on like a steroid hunt on the internet. Yeah, those are the same people competing, and those are the same people that are paying the dollars. You know, so like it's understandable why there is a witch hunt, whether it's right or wrong. Yeah, those kids. You know, they're the kids that are my age and looked up to a bunch of people that might have been on stuff and didn't talk about it. Mm-hmm. And they're like, maybe they're backlashing hard. You know, they got some fucking trauma. Now they're on a fucking steroid hunt. Yeah. Makes sense. Hunting down them roids. I think truly, you know, people just want to know what they're capable of or possible and they don't. You know, yeah. I get that question more than anything. Hey, is it possible for 800 pound deadlift or hey, I, I bench four? Do you think I could bench 425 naturally? Yeah. Like, one, I literally do think it's limitless. I think somebody <laughs> could pull a thousand completely natural. I, I'm not saying it's never going to happen or hasn't happened already. Right. Uh, but person by person, it's impossible to tell. Yeah. Yeah. There's sometimes there's people that have uh, some just really just wild genetics. I mean, uh, Man, again, we don't know who's on shit and who's not. But like, look at Michael Phelps. Yeah. I mean, uh, the guy's knuckles are dragging on the ground. That or, was like the or first. Or just the way Ed Cohn's built. Yeah. I, mean, I know Ed Cohn has been condemned by the power of the community <laughs> several times over. But yeah, uh, if he if he chose a different route in his power and career. He still would have crushed everybody. He That's still what would have been uh, great. Uh, sports science on ESPN, even though it's like pseudoscience. And Ed it's Cohen's hands were the, almost the same <coughs> size as Brian Shaw's yeah. hands. That's what oh, sports, I believe that, yeah. yeah How the fuck <laughs> crazy is that? 6'8 versus 5'5. Five, five. That's what that sports science talks about. You know, they'll talk about like, oh, this is uh, Kobe Adele Bryant. Beckham or whatever. Yeah, yeah, whoever. And, and yeah. for some reason, he his reaction time is 0.1 seconds faster than anybody. Plus, he has a one foot uh, further span mm-hmm. plus a vertical leap. And that's why he does this and no one else does. Remember you know? like Akeem Olajuwon and David yeah, Robinson mm-hmm. and all these seven footers that could fucking get back up off the ground yeah, yeah. Uh, faster than you can fucking blink yeah. to block a shot again. You're like, what the fuck yeah, is yeah. that? How, do, how does anybody compete against that? That was the first uh, and maybe best. Best thing I, I remember of Michael Phelps, I don't know, I think it was his first Olympics, whatever, eight, 12 years ago, mm-hmm. uh, where they talked about, like, no, look how his feet are curved. They're like perfect for pushing water and his femur length and his fucking, you know, but that's fucking mm-hmm. true and it's awesome. Like, no, his, his lats insert here, you know, 10 centimeters yeah. north of where ours do, and that's why he's so flexible or whatever. Yeah, I remember when Ed Cohn was here, he was just sitting down on a bench and me and Mike looking at his back and like his lats would literally go all the way down to his hip. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> his, his arms are his, long. His shoulder to his hip is just, uh, Several inches. I mean, it's, yeah. it's yeah. very short. His torso is tiny. Long arms, big hands. Stubby little quads. And yeah. uh, and he's got that sort of extra muscle out here that the rest of us don't have. Sign us. Yeah, I, I can't, yeah. Well, because everything else is structured so differently, he's going to be able to build up in different areas. Right. And the thing that people forget about genetics and about um, evolution, if they believe in it or whatever, is that it doesn't. it isn't like a solid path toward better things. What happens yeah. is that the genetics change all over the place all the time. And the yeah. ones that are uh, kind of terminal, they don't go forward. Yeah. And the, the ones that make it just keep going forward. 
and the ones that are best adapted are the ones that end up in those areas. And, and the, the short term of that is that as things get more popular, the pool grows and more genetics that are built for that type of thing will head that way. Right. Yeah. Right. Like people are like, no, the steroids are so much better. No, the training's so much better. Like, no, more people are really strong at 10. And that guy and their uncle said you should power lift. And right. he went to powerlifting rather than going to the office yeah, and becoming a tennis player. Right. It's self-selected. Yeah. And, you know, you, you, you look around and you have different people that you're trying to trying to make a judgment about you're trying to figure out it's a fucking deal with that guy yeah <laughs> you know is that guy clean or is he not clean you take somebody like in SEMA who's 255 260 pounds yeah uh my genetics would not have ever allowed me no matter what the scenario is no matter what coach i would have to achieve 260 pounds and be as lean as he is yeah right um Maybe for another guy with pretty good genetics, maybe they would have got to 240. Uh, is it possible that he's clean? I, I would say yes, it is possible. Um, I don't know if I believe him because he's a lying <laughs> son of a bitch. But, uh, he's now on the floor yeah. crying. Yeah, exactly. But, you know, what's our experience uh, with, uh, especially as of late, with rubbing elbows with people from Nigeria. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, holy crap. Talk about crazy genetics. Luau Dang. Yeah. yeah. We got uh, tickets uh, hooked up from uh, our friend Jacob. Yeah. And uh, we were in a booth with a bunch of family members. And, you know, everyone's just uh, these beautiful models of, you know, what, yeah. what fucking awesome genetics should they look said, like. They uh, said, I think, you know, don't quote me, but the, his tribe in Sudan, the average height is like 6'5". Really? Yeah, and so well, he's six eight. His brother's probably six three. His sister was yeah, six three. They said that his brother's seven feet tall. Yeah, another brother. He has nine siblings. <laughs> yeah. uh, the question I've got is: Is it is the like, air up there? Is that the name of the movie? Uh, yeah, air up there, or something like that. <laughs> so that was an, an adaptation that kept working for whatever reason. Yeah. There, I mean, maybe they do they pick fruit off the, the trees. The same deal. Once yeah. basketball became popular there, now we've had you know three Sudanese uh, basketball stars, said, right? Uh, because Lou that's Al what Dang. their body fits. Uh, was influenced by Manute Bull. Manute yeah, Bull yeah. is, I think, one of the tallest players in yeah, the history yeah. of the yeah, NBA. He had a lot of health problems around yeah, yeah. it too. Yeah, I'm sure being that tall, tall and skinny. Yeah. Um, he he started a foundation and basically brought basketball yeah, over okay. there. Before that, they were all playing soccer. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, so kind of what Mike said, like the genetics are sort of the people are finding the right path. Like, yeah. what if Ed Cohn never did powerlifting? He'd right. probably feel like the most unathletic person <laughs> in the history of the world because yeah. he said he, he could barely tie his own shoes. Well, we've certainly seen pictures and maybe even met Ed's brother. Who doesn't look anything like, yeah. isn't built anything like yeah, Ed. He's got, yeah, Ed, I think, has four siblings, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Same thing with the Chinese and weightlifting. You know, everyone says them and the Russians mm -hmm. are so good. Well, like, maybe their body type just found their sport because they're not kicking our ass in basketball. So it's not uh, drugs uh, and yeah. it's not training. Right. Oh, and then people start to talk about whether it's, like, racist or not. But yeah. it's, like, it's just a fucking observation. It's a fact. But America's kicking ass in basketball. But <laughs> a lot of times the Chinese lifters will be kind of bow-legged, at least yeah, from yeah. what mm -hmm. I've noticed. Femurs are short. Yeah. They happen to be pretty uh, good with their body control and they're fast. And so because of their body type, like, what sports they end up being good right. at. They end up being yeah, soccer, strong for how small they are. Gymnastics. Right? Yeah. They, and they end up uh, figure skating. Yeah. They end up kicking ass and all the stuff that takes uh, coordination and, and some speed. And like maternal weight during pregnancy is a big indicator for how tall a kid is going to ultimately be. And that's like one generation or two generations. So you can make people taller by by having big moms, you know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. Um, yeah. I mean, how many times have you seen, uh, you know, a, a football player just tearing it up on the field and they show the mom and the mom's pretty damn big you're like oh yeah. okay well now it's starting to make some sense yeah. now I, now i'm starting to see where this gene pool <laughs> is yeah. coming from you know yeah. switching gears a little bit it is january 11th wednesday january wednesday january 11th and our boy uh cody no love who we had here on the podcast whoop some ass whoop some ass sure and did. uh you know, also, uh, as a side note, uh, we did a crap load of podcasts, as you guys have kind of seen, and we shotgunned a million of them and, and stockpiled a bunch of them. Uh, but we had Cody and Uriah and Jeff Nowitzki and a bunch of people in the UFC or surrounding the UFC and uh, just rubbing elbows with um, Cody just that one day and kind of getting to know Uriah a little bit better. And Team Alpha Male uh, has been really cool. And then to see him fight was fucking amazing. Yeah. And to see the fight unfold the way that it did, because I think uh, Dominic Cruz, I think, kind of won 
round one, round two could have went to anybody. Yeah. And then Cody, no love, Garbrandt, uh, just kicked it into another gear and was able to uh, end up winning the strap. And then uh, the unexpected happened when he had that kid who uh, had leukemia yeah. that, he's br- that he's bringing down to the ring with him and stuff. I mean, you can't help but just fucking melt when you see something like that happen. And it, was and it, was, and it wasn't like a recent thing. This is yeah, like over three, four five years. years. Yeah. Yeah, cool. he's he's been bringing him to the ring. My understanding is f- for quite some time. I don't know if he was able to do it in the UFC before because uh, unless you're fighting for the title, you you can only bring like two people. With uh, you. Okay, and I, I think those two people are like you need them. Yeah, you need right. like a, a you have like a cut guy and you got a guy yelling at you. I right. think I, I'm not 100 percent sure. But also today, uh, Cody was announced from previously being unranked. I think he's top five. Pound for pound fighters in the world. Yeah, I think that's, that's right. pretty crazy. Yeah, that's pretty good. That's uh, he's up there with fucking Aldo, uh, Demetrius Johnson, yeah. McGregor, like some badasses. Yeah, what I was what I was thinking during the fight was like, you know, holy crap, what a career change. You know, like uh, if he went in there and uh, got tired and got smoked. Yeah, uh, we wouldn't be. <clears throat> yes, we certainly wouldn't be talking about him right now, right? Like not like this. Well, he probably would have just disappeared. Sadly, if Dominic would have beat him, it, you know, like a, that's kind of what happens in the UFC yeah. now because there's so much talent coming up. Yeah. Uh, but now he's either going to fight Dominic or TJ, and that's going to be another huge fight for him, both uh, monetarily and career wise. Yeah, I think uh, I don't know which one of those I want to see more. Yeah, I want to see both pretty bad. And I bet they'll both happen. I think the better fights TJ, but TJ I, here in Sacramento. <laughs> if I was a fight promoter, it's on. Yeah. <laughs> that's the best. You can't beat yeah. that. I think uh, you know it was interesting to see that the fight go down the way that it did, and then for, to have the fight be one of the better fights that I've seen, yeah, in years. Time. I mean, there's a lot of great fights in the UFC, but I mean that kind of stands out as like a top ten for yeah, sure. Hopefully, they start picking fighters too to be the main event. I know that was the co-main event because then the yeah. Ronda was such a want want moment at the end of the night. <sighs> yeah, that was a huge letdown. Yeah, just I think uh, the most amount of money uh, Cody has won, you know, before that was like around was around sixty or so, uh-huh. you know, for any any one fight, and it was it was cool to see like he actually made some money during that for that fight. Then he, you know, I think almost doubled his income by winning, and then I think he fight also got night. fight of the night. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's just fucking amazing, you know, and, and hopefully, uh, hopefully he can be set up, you know, for for a long time from not 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 just winning that one fight, but winning that one fight and s- setting up some a few other fights and doing well in those because you'd like to see you're rooting for that guy. You can't help but root for that guy. He's gone through a lot. He's lived in his fucking car and shit like that, and lived by lived out by dumpsters and all kinds of crazy shit. Well, I tell people that. Uh, that day that we recorded with him afterwards and you wanted to square off with him and like his eyes freaked you out. <clears throat> yeah. Excuse me. Yeah. It was terrifying. He can develop a lot of intensity. He was also being, he was also clowning him. He yeah, was yeah. also dancing. And, like a uh, fucking burpee. Yeah, yeah. It was awesome. It was awesome. It was just cool to have Cody in here though. Cause uh, you know, a lot of times we'll pull people in that we don't really know personally, yeah. and, but he just wanted to kick it after he was telling us stories and just yeah. hanging out and excited and seemed like a positive, positive kid. Yeah. It was cool that he wanted to, uh, wanted to hang out and you know back to that uh that kid that he brought in the ring it was just so cool afterwards he puts the belt on him and stuff like that um you know that's the kind of guy that you want you want to see progress you want to see a guy like that yeah. you know win and and come out on top and then plus on top of it uh it's not just like he's uh you know some savage who just happened to be able to win the belt he, at least it appears um from all the stuff he's told us and from the stuff the footage that you see Mm -hmm. seems like he's doing everything he possibly can uh to make sure he's prepared setting himself up for victory so you got to applaud all that if you listen to that podcast you can hear him laying out the game plan because he was just a few days from the announcement of that fight when we had him in and i held that one until a couple weeks before the actual um actual fight yeah and and he, he laid it all out and his uncle had to be a very critical part of that yeah we need to interview his uncle next time. Yeah. Oh yeah, no, I know. And and it, you know, um, you know, going into the fight and uh, knowing Dominic Cruz and and all the different things they kept saying about Dominic Cruz, how he's unorthodox. Obviously, the style has worked for him for a long time, and he's a dominant fighter. Um, but a lot of times, unorthodox can just look like bad boxing right. when you have somebody who's so seasoned. And thirty-two fights is no joke. Even if they're not against great opponents, thirty-two pro fights is. 
is a lot of fights. So I was fans. talking to guys too about uh, the speed because like it's like in the NBA or NFL when you notice that a running back, wide receiver, point guard is fast and they're on TV on, in yeah. an NBA game. They're really fucking fast, right? Because they're already mm-hmm. going against the fastest athletes in the world. Mm-hmm. And Cody looks so fucking fast, you yeah. know? And like, damn, dude, Dom's a really good athlete. He's yeah. a fucking champion. He's got to be fast. All the all those guys are quick as shit. And Cody looks so, like, Matrix moves going on in there. So incredibly fast. Yeah. Um, another point on, on MMA and Uriah and all that stuff, uh, our friend Ben Alderman is setting up inside of Uriah's new uh, Ultimate Yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah. That's uh, that'll be a good a good matchup. Yeah, having those he, guys I don't know if he's doing conditioning or CrossFit or what what exactly he's doing. I think it's CrossFit. I think he's doing CrossFit. Yeah, yeah that'll be a good addition. I know Uriah's not uh, much into lifting. Maybe he'll get into it now Maybe that he's so. uh, retired. Not, yeah, now he's retired. Maybe <laughs> he'll want to get a little Go more get jacked. jacked. Yeah, I guess he already is jacked. What does he fucking care? He's jacked. <laughs> Stakes are lower though when you're not fighting. Yeah. Yeah. yeah who cares if your elbows hurt or something? Yeah. I know it's the new year and people want to start uh, to try to be less fat. Mike, what do you got going on with being less fat? It seems like you're trying to drop some weight. You may have already dropped a few LBs. Yeah. Uh, frequency and volume of my training is going up. Um, I got some homies uh, sending me meals, which help uh, a lot. Bite meals are sending me some meals. Nice. Uh, so that helps a ton just because I don't have to fucking cook. And then I'm, yeah. not, I'm not caught uh, going to Chipotle. And I'm not caught like buying food. Even going to the grocery store, even though we talk about like don't go to the grocery store when you're hungry mm-hmm. and buy small things. But like I always end up grocery stores close and I'll go go buy bullshit. Um, so yeah, how can you not stop and look at all the cool shit at the grocery store? Yeah. And you end up you end up just even if you buy something that's quote unquote healthy. Yeah, even like crackers. Like I love crackers. You're and they're eat not the healthy, fuck but out all yeah, of you them. eat too much of everything. Yeah. Uh, so having these meals has helped a lot. Uh, my hydration's high. And then just yeah, frequency is really high. So I'm trying to train five, six days a week. It's and hard just to do something. It's hard to keep the hydration up when it's cold out. You or traveling. Just, I get fucked. Yeah. I'm so bad at it when I'm traveling. And, and we've had storms, and Sacramento's been really it's rainy and really cold. Bad, yeah. yeah, it's probably the worst winter in a while for us. You know, it's it's crazy to think, you know, like uh, that we were <laughs> that we were designed to be so much different than we are now. <laughs> yeah. You know? Um, we were designed to be able to go without water for, you yeah. know, periods of time and not have to carry around a water bottle mm-hmm. with us 24 seven. But now you kind of find yourself in a panic. You're like, motherfucker, I forgot my water bottle. Yeah. What am I going to do? And you're, you're leaving your house for two hours Yeah, <laughs> and you're, you're really upset about it. You're like, I'm not going to be hydrated, Yeah, but yeah, That's it's true. important. And in the winter, um, you know, I used to always teach, uh, our kids when I was a uh, football coach. That that was the most important time to make sure you're drinking your water because everybody kind of has it beaten into their head. Summertime, you need water, mm-hmm. and and we're gonna get water breaks because a it's hot. <laughs> you need to rest, and b you need to get water. And then you know, then the, when it's cold out, people kind of forget about it, and people end up cramping up, and they end up being de- dehydrated. Uh, I tore muscle that way, you know, tore yeah. my left bicep up, and it could be the reason why my left elbow is all fucked up nowadays. So make sure you're drinking your water. Yeah, everyone always talks about too. Uh, often when you think you're hungry, you're actually just thirsty. So if you're staying hydrated, you're just hopefully less likely to eat bullshit too. Is that my problem? That's possible. <laughs> you could just be fat also. Yeah. Could be an issue. Mike and I got into a, a topic uh, yesterday a little bit about like inflammation. Yeah, and, and uh, all you bullshit dieters out there. It's just <laughs> such a it's such a hot word right now. And, um, you know, I'd like to kind of give my two cents on it. And you guys can chime in. Um you know, I, I do kind of feel <clears throat> that a lot of these buzzwords are bullshit. I think if you were to take a 10-year-old kid and say, hey, does this loaf, like, would this loaf of bread hurt your knee? Or would, like, squatting like this, like a catcher, uh, for an entire uh, length of a baseball game hurt your knee? Like, you just spelled it out that simple. Uh, hey, would, hey, would running uh, hurt your knee? Um, or... Or would uh, you know gluten or sugar hurt your knee? Mm-hmm. Like they're they're gonna know the answer, and I think it's just been overblown. I I, um, I think you know to stick to efforting's uh, talk and to stick to what Stan said is like okay, of course, if we have a lot of bad habits, uh, then we need to start to chop away. We need to chip away at as many bad habits as we can to try to figure out why our knee is inflamed or why our elbow is inflamed. Mm-hmm. 
Uh, but for the most part, I think a lot of this stuff that's coming out right now, and I, I do understand some of the things with gluten. I do understand our crops are sprayed with weird shit, and it can cause uh, you know an irritant to people and, and things like that. Um, but let's just not overblow everything and 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 make that such a direct route to why you're hurt. How many people uh, <laughs> that are at a healthy body fat percentage, no medical issues, exercise a good amount, mm-hmm. and eat fine, uh, are fucked up, that non-celiac, are mm-hmm. getting fucked up by sugar, gluten, or something of that nature? Nah. Have you ever heard anyone? Nah, yeah, not I mean, I've ne- literally never heard of one story. If someone's mega overweight, mm-hmm. they're eating no fucking yeah. vitamins. Mm-hmm. They're not exercising. Type 1 diabetic. You got a hereditary yeah. thing. We're not talking yeah, about yeah, this yeah. different Yeah, yeah, yeah. Erase all that. Erase celiac, because celiac is a real thing, and that's where <coughs> gluten came about. Mm-hmm. Uh, but that's, I don't know the percent, you know, but it's like 1%. Yeah, it it's like 1% or mm-hmm. whatever that's actually celiac that has a real it's allergy. It's a very low percentage. Yeah, yeah, that has a real allergy to gluten. Mm-hmm. Uh, that actually tears holes in their intestines. Right, that's, yeah. right. And can fuck up with their, you know, sometimes it's their skin. Sometimes it could be as far as, uh, I think, like a shock and all this fucking mm-hmm. stuff. Uh, epilepsy, who knows? There's all these real things. Mm-hmm. Besides the people with real issues, who's actually inflamed from sugar <coughs> that isn't just inflamed from being obese? Right, right. And who's inflamed from uh, even us? Yeah, our joints are fucking inflamed that aren't trying to push the limit of what they can squat and deadlift. Right. <laughs> like, sugar's not going to solve those issues. Right. Or taking out sugar, in my opinion, will not solve those issues as long as it's not the only fucking thing you're eating. Right. And, I, and I'm also a proponent. Like, I like the low-carb diets. And, you know, I've said many times, kind of, I've described why I like them. They sort of fit my personality better. I've always, even as a kid, have always liked breakfast i've always liked eggs and cheese and bacon and those kinds of things so i'm i'm kind of used to that now you know give me an opportunity to eat some carbohydrates and i'm going to want to eat a lot of them Mm -hmm. and i'm going to make a lot of mistakes and i'm going to overeat when i am able to pull carbohydrates away it helps me to stay more dedicated to the diet it allows me to follow the diet a lot easier and if i have one day a week where i can make some choices that are off of that menu of Mm -hmm. low carbs then that's a that's a good easy way for me to lose weight. Each person's going to be a little bit different. I don't do it because I'm like, oh, my inflammation's going to go away. Um, it's just I think we just get to a point where we hear these buzzwords and then people are like, that's what that that's what's yeah. wrong with me. And even if it does make you feel better and it is inflammation, whatever it is, don't just say that because you watched it on Doctor Oz or your favorite podcast mm-hmm. host said like, oh, my inflammation's gone. Like no. if you feel yeah. better, that's fine. You don't need to make an excuse or a reason for anybody. Why, hey, Jim, why do you do this? I feel better. Fucking right, dude. Do that. Yeah. But don't say it's because it burns more fat. Don't say all these things that you read in bullshit books or bullshit because right. it's just not mm-hmm. true. I mean, there's there's studies and facts that show that ketosis, which was made for epilepsy, does not uh, necessarily burn more calories or put you in a more deficit than just eating less calories. Right. Right. That's the whole you know argument for this non-sugar, high-fat diet. Mike and I talked also, too, about uh, your brain health. Yeah. You know, my, my brain feels great if I'm doing low-carb or I am, like, removed, you know, several hours from a meal. I feel pretty good right. fasted, too. My basketball yeah. coach in high school is really about that. Shout out to Dean Stark. I've never mentioned his name yet, but he's a published author. Go buy his fucking book. Uh, and he talked all the time where if someone asks us when to eat before training, we'll say one to two hours to get energy. <coughs> he, he had us eat like four or five hours before. He's like, no, we're going to be hungry when we're out here. And he kind of meant mentally and physically. Uh, but it's true. You're, you're a little sharper when you're a little hungry. One sensation reinforces the other. I, I think guess. so. And, and obviously. Who knows what kind of hormones you produce at that point. Like you might produce more testosterone yeah. and shit like that. Same thing with uh Thanksgiving, yeah. right? Like, uh, what's the fucking sleep? Oh, uh, tryptophan. tryptophan. Tryptophan being so minimal that yeah, people are just tired yeah. because they're full as fuck. It's very suggestive. Yeah. Yeah. In and of itself. I think that if you read um, the physician's desk references, the PDR, the one that's got like the inserts of all the drugs, yeah. if you read through the side effects on all the drugs, yeah, a lot of them are very yeah, similar. Yeah. And people will immediately assume that they're getting them from whatever they're taking right. yeah. or uh, that they will get them if they take it and so they'll never take it. So it, it is. it comes down to how people feel yeah, and yeah. they're very impressionable and all that. Um, Rob Bailey, when he was in here, was talking yeah. about how he was – heading toward vegan and it's like he said i feel better like well that's great dude get after it that's if that's like i think it's 
I don't know. I think it's kind of silly, but if you yeah. but if you feel better, then then go for it. And then if you stop feeling better, yeah, that might be else. a thing because it's so far off of the off of the the mainstream that it might be an issue. I think you guys need to go listen to uh, the first interview we did with Rob Wolf. It was over the phone, so the quality isn't as high as this one. But yeah, uh, you know, Rob Wolf is is. Probably world renowned for Chad Wesley Smith. Can you get better <laughs> recording equipment? It's not like you're recording in the goddamn bathroom, by the way. Uh, he had a haircut. <laughs> sounds like, uh, or he is the one that that basically brought pa- paleo to the public eye, as far as I know, with the Paleo Solutions book, as well as teaming up with CrossFit and making that a very popular deal. Uh, but when we were talking to him, you know, th- when someone thinks paleo, they think keto, which are different. Mm-hmm. And when they think paleo and keto, they think health and performance, which are all very different. Um, and when you think paleo and keto, you think it's the answer for both performance and health, which are different. Uh, so you need to go listen to that because he opens your guys' mind to this is the paleo guy saying different things. Mm-hmm. Something I noticed, too, that uh, it depends on what your activity is. Because if you're just getting cardio, you really it doesn't really impact your, your uh, appetite the way lifting and cardio does. And I've just been hamstrung for literally for months. Uh, my shoulders fucked up, my knees fucked up, my ankles fucked up. There's really not anything I can do in terms of lifting that actually I can do consistently just because of that stuff. So I'm just hungry. Yeah. So right, right. But it it doesn't um, it doesn't solve any of my problems to just do cardio. I guess what yeah. I'm saying. Like yeah. I don't really lose weight the same way. Yeah, uh, I got you. You know. Yeah, and that's you know more popular, maybe more study now too, where you know a little higher fat diet can help with more endurance training because that that slow burst, that first energy system isn't there for glycogen and carbs, and and performance wise, maybe that is a time if you're doing you know a 5K, yeah. even do a marathon. I've heard a lot of people do it in more of a ketosis state, uh, but if you're lifting weights, if you're doing sprints, if you're playing fucking basketball, you're probably gonna need some carbs in your system. Yeah. Uh, another important thing to point out is we're not suggesting that you just say, oh fuck it, I'm just gonna eat whatever I want while I'm injured. That's not the message we're trying to convey either. Um, you do want to try to, you know, repair and heal as fast as you possibly can. You want to try to do everything you possibly can to get better. Uh, we're just saying we think some of this information that's coming out right now is bullshit. And I yeah, the application it, actually it, is the most yeah, bullshit. Yeah. yeah, and it just the 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 abuse of the word inflammation. Uh, when it comes to you know eating a carbohydrate or something is is a little crazy to me, and I think that. Um, Really, probably the main problem is if there is some sort of extra inflammation that's occurring, it's probably just from being overweight, from well, having several other bad habits when, that are not being say discussed. Inflammation's bad. Like inflammation is yeah. probably there for a reason. Yeah, that's probably fixing some issue you have because you've been sitting on the fucking couch the whole time. Yeah, well, that's I think or just overuse or yeah. whatever. Yeah, yeah. I think that well, another thing that just pisses me off is that the keto low carb deal, which I'm not against in certain cases. A lot of people I've worked with will try mixing that in here and there but um to see if they feel better but the issue is that they point the fingers back to the early 2000s and 90s and blame the government uh for the low fat fad uh, which is all fine and dandy uh but you should be fully researched which even i say i'm not fully researched and, and top expert before you start to go the opposite where you say no sugar no carbs for no one Right. Yeah. They're doing the exact same thing the government's doing. And my my opinion is very hypocritical uh, saying, you know, oh, they only do that because of money. Maybe they did. Yeah. But plenty of people are healthy with a moderate carb, moderate protein, moderate right. fat diet. <laughs> the sugar board influencing influencing the standards the way they did um, doesn't mean that they're 100 percent wrong. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. That's yeah. I guess yeah. That's the simplest and, and, way of what I meant. And the most ridiculous thing too is is let let's let's just all stop being a bunch of dicks about it. Like <laughs> we can sit here and agree on things that are quote unquote healthy and unhealthy. I I know that that word is a little bit hard to define all the time, um, but if I flashed an apple in front of you, you could nod your head, right? Like you know, you flash a bunch of stuff in front mm-hmm. of people or show them fucking pictures. And you can say, yep, that, that's relatively healthy. Yep, that's relative, you know. Even, it, even to the point where you but put. But everyone wants to fucking argue over every little thing. Yeah, even know? to the point where you put one Oreo in a picture and you put a box of Oreos in a picture. Mm, yeah. Right, yeah. there's a big fucking difference. Yeah, people. no. Yeah, two. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Bad, oh, a box, you know? probably not. <laughs> 75. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, and that's literally what it comes down to for everyone. Moderation yeah. in the in the areas that, that you can that you can handle. Cause may, sure, some people can't handle sugar for their personality, yeah. mm-hmm. for their, maybe it makes your head feel weird, whatever it is. Fine, dude, fucking do that. I'm fully aware that there's a lot of alcohol in my Instagram, but yeah. <laughs> it doesn't say how much I had. Yeah. You know, I had like this much. I yeah. tasted this. It was amazing. You know what I mean? Right. 
Yeah. And you're not posting a beer a fucking day, and it's no. not a six-pack a day. No. no. I realize it's uh, 2017, and some of you guys want to make some changes. So if you want to make some changes, try to follow something that you can stick with, and try not to, you know, try not to uh, listen to all this shit about inflammation. The inflammation superhighway mm-hmm. is not leading down, you, leading you down the right path. Um, find something that you can do. Find something that works for you. Um, not everybody has to wake up at 5 a.m. and do fasted cardio. You don't need to feel like you're going to go to jail because somebody else posts on Instagram that they snuck a workout in while you were sleeping. Uh, it doesn't matter too much on, on when it happens. Just make it happen. Make exercise happen um, and make uh, cleaning up your diet happen. Even if it's just even if you can only handle uh, eating clean for a day or two, it's better than none. Right. True. We're good. That's it. I think All we're right. good. Um, we have, uh, the Arnold classic coming up. We have, uh, Jen Wiederstrom coming into town. I don't know when this will air and how all this will play out, but, uh, we have some cool shit coming up. We're going to be in New York. We're going to go visit, uh, Gary Vanderchuk, Gary V. Uh, if you don't know who he is, check him out. He's got a lot of great advice on making money and, uh, his message, uh, ends up being similar to a lot of motivational people. And I think you guys will find that he's got some great information. Multiply your hustle, multiply your muscle, and may all your shits be tapered. I'm at Mark Smelly Bell on Instagram and Twitter. Later. Big shout out to our sponsors, 8 Man Strong Apparel at 8ManStrong.com, Bodybuilding.com for all your supplement needs. Increase your bench press at HowMuchYourBench.net. Power the only strength magazine available in digital and print, ThePowerMagazine.com. I am Silent Mike, Instagram, YouTube, Twitter. And new for 2017, I'm the McD at all of the social medias. Follow the show on Instagram. We are at Mark Bell's Powercast. I forgot to say congratulations to Casey Mitchell on a 600-pound deadlift. That one-legged monster on Instagram. That was uh, fucking fantastic. Also to Steve Gentile, who put together a huge, huge contest as well. Uh, ripping up an 826-pound deadlift at the end of the day. And uh, the Forsaken Warrior, who also put together a good meet. I know he wanted bigger numbers, but and congratulations, lastly, to my homie, the Nigerian Nightmare, <laughs> <laughs> part two, T.P. Papula. I think that's how we say his name. T. Papula. T. Papula. All right, and now we're out.